we want to figure out how many balloons we have here. And obviously, we could just count these. But now we have other ways of thinking about it, especially because they're arranged in this nice, in this nice array, this nice grid pattern here. And the reason why it's useful to not just always have to count it, but be able to use a little bit of multiplication with the number of rows and the number of columns, is that you might run into things, and you will run into things, where it's very hard to count each of the, the objects individually, but it might be a little bit easier to count the rows and to count the columns. So for example, right over here, we see that we have one, two, three, four rows, and we have, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns. So this is a, you could view this as a four, you could view this as an array of objects where we have four rows. Let me write that down. We have four rows and we have seven columns. Seven columns. And you might already remember that we can calculate the total number of objects by multiplying the rows times the columns. Four rows times seven columns. Now why does this work? Why, do we, why, does this, why will this give us the actual, the actual number of objects? Well, we could view this. We have four rows, so we have four groups of things. And how many things are in each of those, in each of those rows? Well, the number of columns. We have seven things in each of those four rows. So four, four groups of seven. Or you could view it the other way around. You could view that you each column is a group. So then you have seven groups. And how, how many objects do you have in each? Well, that's what the rows tell you. You have four things in each of those, in each of those columns. And we already know that both of, these, both of these quantities are going to find the exact same number, the number of things that we have right over here. So these two things are equivalent. Four times seven is equal to seven times four. And there's a bunch of ways that we can calculate either one of these. We can skip count by four. We say four times four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. And let's see, let me make sure that's seven. So four times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we get 28. We could just calculate there are 28 objects here. And likewise, we could skip, out, skip count by sevens. We could go seven, seven times two is 14, times three is 21, times four is 28, just adding seven every time. And so we could get 28 the other way. Let's do that in that same color. We could get 28 the other way. But what if you had a situation where you didn't know, where you either didn't want to do these techniques or it would have been hard to do these techniques, or you didn't know what four times seven was off of the top of your head, which you should know at some point in the very, very near future. Is there any way to break this down into something that maybe you do know, or maybe that's a little bit easier to compute? Well, you could realize that seven columns is the same thing as five columns and then two columns. So you could view seven columns as, you could view it as, five columns, so this is five columns right over here, plus two columns, plus, let me do this in another color, plus two, plus two columns. So that's just like saying that four times seven, four times seven, we do the seven in that purple color, I want to stay color coded, is the same thing as four, four times five plus two. Five, five plus two. And all I did is I replaced the seven with a five plus two. The seven has been replaced with the five plus two. Now why, why is this interesting? Well, now I can break this up into two separate arrays. So I could say, well, look, there's the four, there's the array that has four rows and two columns right over here. And then there's the array that has four rows and five columns right over here. So how many objects are in this one, in the yellow one right over here? Well, there's four times five. Four times five objects. So there's four times five objects in the yellow grid or yellow array. And how many, and how many in, the, in this orangish looking thing? Well, there's going to be four times two. Four times two. Four times two. And if we take the sum of the four times the five and the four times the two, what are we going to get? Well, we're going to get the four times the seven. We're going to get the four times the five plus two. 
So if we take the sum of these things, and we want to do the multiplication first, so I'll just put a parenthesis around that to emphasize that, that this is going to be the same thing as these things as these things up here. And so you might say, oh, I know what 4 times 5 is. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 2 is 8. 20 plus 8 is 28. And you might say, okay, Sal, you know, that's that was kind of a, you know, I, I get it. 4 times 7 is 28, 4 times, which is the same thing as 4 times 5 plus 2. And then I, I see that that's the same thing as 4 times 5 plus 4 times 2. And actually, this is called the distributive property, that 4 times 5 plus 2 is the same thing as 4 times 5 plus 4 times 2. But you know, I, I, could just, I could just do the, one of these first techniques you talked about. Why is this distributive property that you just showed me, why is this useful for computing or doing multiplication type problems? Well, let me give you a, a, a slightly more difficult, a slightly more difficult one. Let's imagine you wanted to multiply, you wanted to multiply six times, six times, let's write it as six times. 36. And actually, I don't need to write that parenthesis. 6 times 36. So how could you do this? Well, you could decompose 36 into two products or into two numbers where it's easier to find the product of that and 6. So for example, 36 is the same thing as 30 plus 6. So this is going to be equal to 6 times 30 plus 6. 6 times 30 plus 6. And what's this going to be? Well, we just saw 6 times these two things added together first. This is going to be equal to this is going to be equal to 6 times 30, 6 times 30, 6 times 30 plus 6 times 6. Plus 6 times 6. 6 times 6. Notice we distributed this 6. 6 times 30 plus 6 times 6. Now why is this useful? Why was this useful at all? I'm going to put parentheses to emphasize. We're going to do the multiplication first. In general, when you see multiplication and addition in a row like this, or and division, you want to do your multiplication and division first, then do your addition and subtraction. So what's 6 times 30? Well, this is easier to calculate. 6 times 3 we know to be 18, so 6 times 30 is going to be 180. And 6 times 6? Well, we know that's going to be 36. So this is going to be 180 plus 36. And what's that going to be? 180 plus 36. Well, 0 plus 6 is 6. 8 plus 3 is 11. 1 plus 1 is 2. So you just figured out that 6 times 36 is equal to 216. And what we just did, what we just did with the distributive property, this is actually going to be how you're going to multiply all sorts of larger numbers, way larger than what we just saw. So the distributive property, which hopefully you're pretty convinced by, by based on how we broke things up, is a super useful thing as you want to compute larger and larger numbers. And you're going to find it even more useful when you go even further in your mathematical career.